Hi everybody, this is the first of our weekly installments of videos that we've talked about and we're going to deal with some things that were already asked and some things that came up at Herman's typewriter meeting in West Virginia, which we were we had a lot of fun at. It was uh, great to attend and see everybody, but we did a lot of work on typewriters there also. And Somebody correctly identified this as a toolkit out of a sports car, which is exactly what the bag is. Those tools are long gone though. They asked us what kind of tools did we take with us and why and what kind of tools do we use for typewriters and then there was a related post I think by Brian Brumfield talking about uh, hollow ground screwdrivers, talking about gunsmithing tools and then there was yet another question, I don't remember who asked that one, about what kind of tools you recommended keeping on your workbench versus in your rollaway. Wasn't that what it was, Will? Uh, it was something, something like that. Something along those lines. So here's, this is everything I brought down to Herman's because I knew we weren't going to be doing any super heavy repairs. And I'll show you what I've got here and explain just a little bit about, about why these are handy for typewriter repairs. That's not a lot of stuff there. Nope. These first, I'll go into, these would look like brake tools to a lot of people, but typewriter toolkits from back in the day had picks and hooks in them. These are really handy when you're trying to get a spring on or off something, or when you're trying to reach through and move something out of the way so you can get a screwdriver in there. So these picks, these are Craftsman, and uh, these are readily available, and we've used those quite a bit. This screwdriver is, is pretty handy. This is the kind that extends. Its blades are hollow ground and it has different bits in the handle. Also, this is not a Craftsman tool commercial, I'm just saying you get what you pay for. That's right. So, you know, if you... If well, you're you, used to. If you, yeah, if you, well, yeah, we'll, we could go into that whole Craftsman <laughs> tool debate right now. Yeah, well. This looks like a Craftsman tool commercial. These are almost all five or six or seven years old tools, yeah. at least. Yeah. So, a smaller screwdriver here, an extension shaft, because we have here a ratcheting screwdriver and a whole bunch of various different bits of all different sizes, and you will find screws of all these dimensions inside typewriters. Yeah. One place or another, this one has hex, you won't find that yeah. in torques, but this set gets used. A little bit bigger right angle screwdriver, with interchangeable bits. They're also hollow ground. That's important for not rounding out screw heads. An extension that works in either one. You can you can tell when the machine's been, you know, yanked apart before yep. and yep. put back together by some ham handed right. club fisted individual right. that I can uh, make that make apart. Yeah, I'll just rip apart. It. Yeah, and then, Let uh, me look at it. All not, the fasteners are rounded out. Not that long ago I had to fix a lawnmower that one of my relatives' neighbors said, I know a few things about motors, let me take a look at that. And they made it so it wouldn't run at all, so yeah. you can tell. And then small precision pliers that are good for reaching in places to get things. Because you're not going to, the average person is not going to tear a machine completely apart to get it one fastener. Right. There are going to be times when you have to reach through or in or around, and so those come in handy. And then a larger screwdriver, this also has interchangeable bits, hollow ground, and the handle can be removed and made a right angle screwdriver. Some screws in frames or for feet uh, require a lot of torque to break them loose, so this kind of thing comes in really handy and it helps you not round out the screws. And that's it, that's all I brought, this is all I brought to her, oh, one, I should put, this should be right in here. If you're in my age group, reading glasses might come in handy, even if you don't need them to read. These are two and a half times, one and a half times magnification yep. glasses. They're real cheap, but man, they make a big difference when you're trying to read serial numbers. How about those glasses up there in the top of your uh, toolbox oh, there? Let's take a minute yeah, to talk about yeah. shop safety. Shop safety, yep. These Be are, sure to read, understand. I'm not going to go into these. These are stylish. I got a whole yeah. case of these for nothing. Yeah. I, for I, nothing. I get a lot of talk when I wear those. those. Yep, these are good. These are good. They're not yeah. modern, but you know. ANSI, whatever. That's right. Blah, blah, OSHA, who cares? So now the other question was, what do you keep out on your workbench versus what do you have stowed away in your rollaway? So if you look, 
Now we we'll do a pan here. Yeah, we fix a lot of things here: lawnmowers, snow throwers, yard equipment, weed yeah, whackers, leaf shame. blowers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do uh, carburetors. We do all kinds of things carburetor here. So, yep. Yeah, so there's carburetor. Those were up on the workbench last time, I think. Mm -hmm. There's also a wood project going in here. Yeah, there's two wood yeah, projects. There's actually. a wood project over there. There's a bunch of lawnmowers right. over there. Right, right. Look, some right. actual typewriters. Right here's a lawnmower that's assembled, waiting to get put back together so we yeah. need a lot of tools at any one given time and I hate being disorganized it makes me crazy so I find that the things that I need to reach for the most quickly are what are in these racks here and nothing else yep and now I, I brought another toolbox with us uh, down there to Herman's it has some other tools that I picked out special for typewriters but uh, there's not a whole lot different from what you're seeing here. No. But let, me the, you, let me show you what's ahead. up here on, on, in this toolbox, because that question was asked specifically, what do you keep on the workbench versus in the rollaway? Um, well, odds are I'm not going to do too much work on the bench that requires half-inch drive sockets, so I don't have those. I have some wrenches, and I can take this toolbox with me to work on home repairs or, or whatever else I need to. Wrenches, some uh, vice grips. That, I, I, uh, the 3 8 inch drive sockets are in another box right now, but I only have 3 8 inch drive in here. And then some screwdrivers, and then some regular normal tools for home use. That's it. Because almost everything that's typewriter related is going to be specific and precision. So right. those are in the top drawers of my rollaway, and they stay there so that they don't get mm -hmm. damaged. And that's it. I mean, everything else that's bigger than that that's required for working on anything bigger than typewriters is mm -hmm. away in the rollaway because I'll get those sets out, put the sockets down, use them, and put them back away. Yeah. Like I said, we do have a we do have a traveling box. This uh, brought this to Herman's. Never took it out of the car. This yeah, we, uh, mine. really uh, really you're not gonna see too many cases when we have to get into here. But there's uh, so there's a large number of smaller precision screwdrivers in here. Um, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Calculators, ruler, and then down here, uh, primarily some long screwdrivers because you might have to reach all the way through the frame of a standard typewriter to get it to screw on the bottom of the upper deck. We've had to do that before, yep. and you're not going to yep. get a right angle screwdriver. Now, you know, the modern mind might think, oh, I can get at that with a right angle, but that's not how they did it in the first place. Yeah. They did it in the first right. place by reaching all the way through the typewriter, so you're going to need some long, you know, standard screwdrivers for that. And mm -hmm. a couple other heavier yep. tools in there, and, hammer. Uh, ground bits is good. Magnetized screwdrivers is good. Yep. I've got a magnetizer, so I can pass yep. a screwdriver through it and magnetize them. You've seen some tools used in fun before on other typewriters, like, uh, you know, things like this and hammer. We do that, especially yeah. on a machine where it's already broke. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we used we used one of those yeah, drove, before. Drove over. We ran over the ribbon top on a Rex Visible yeah. to flatten it out just yeah. for fun, and it worked. But that's about that's about it for the tools. So hopefully that answers your questions. Um, and again, you know, it's what you know how to do with the tools more so than the tools. It's the same thing. That's as right. Golf clubs. You know, a thousand dollar driver is not going to guarantee you're going to hit the fairway every time. Yeah, if you, you can't use it, it, you still might be swearing it, and throwing it in the pond. Yep, yep. It's just a chunk of metal on the end of That's a right. stick. So, you know, again, experience and practice take things apart. That's right. <laughs> things that don't matter That's first. That's right. But things that don't matter, take them apart and get good at it. Yep. That's right. So that's it for tools. Now I have a short list of uh, things that have come up during the last week, uh, primarily on the on the uh, Facebook group for typewriters. Somebody was asking about typefaces and why they have different typefaces and uh, so forth and so on. I'll tell you, here's what you need to do. Anybody that's thinking about that needs to get this soft cover version of Beeching's book. Um, not only are there, uh, let's see if I can find this here. This is really exciting. Watch you watching me flip through this book, right? Well, I got a cold. I hope nobody catches it. Oh, yeah, mm. stay away from your computer screen. Yeah. Uh, you've got keyboards in here, a large number of keyboards represented, but you also have a description of a number of typefaces. And the cool thing about this is it's written like a type guide from the manufacturers where each one actually has a description of what it's for. So if I go, if I go to something official from the manufacturer here, like the Royal Line Book, okay, if I go in here, uh, I'm just gonna, again, you're going to have to watch me flip through. Here we go. 
I can see the type styles in here, and they not only show it to you in real size, but give you a description of what each one is. So for those people who are interested in the various different typefaces, uh, th this would be the type of material I'd find. That's that's the easiest to find, you know. This. I think on our blog we shared a machine that had a really extra large typeface way back in the What's Wrong With This series. Right. That had a really large typeface for uh, schools. Right. So that was that was something that was brought up. I just I recommend you try to find those. Like I said, this this you'll find these you might be able to find, and some someday I might get around to putting those on the net. I don't know. Uh, same group talked about uh, small typewriters from Smith Corona. Uh, there was a post on the uh, Courier. Uh, no, not the Courier. Cougar. Cougar. Well, you know the Cougar is the is the small Smith Corona machine from the sixties. It had a further life. This is the machine as it appeared about 1978. This is the final iteration for the Smith Corona small portable. This is the Courier. This one happens to be a Courier CT for correcting typewriter. You'll notice it still has its original crappy yeah. correcting ribbon in there. Up here. Uh, yeah, correction slash typewriter. Still has a page gauge. Yep. Um, and this is the final iteration of the uh, Smith Corona machine that began as a Zephyr, became a Skywriter, then went to uh, Cougar and Corsair and other Seabirds, and finally ends up as the Courier. So this uh, this machine, Dave uh, was able to look down on the inside there and find the serial number starts with 8Y. Yeah. Yeah. Which uh, doesn't show up in any of my serial number lists. Now we got eight series typewriters. Yeah, about eight Y. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, first yeah. use of this name was in 1978, according to the yeah. Patent and Trademark Office. But this is not, uh, you know, uh, again, let's understand. We were alive when these things were being sold brand new in stores. Yep. So the styling to us looks like that era. I mean, you've got to understand if you if you look at a Dreyfus styled Quiet Deluxe, that's kind of your idea of what everything was styled like back then. Well, the 70s had their own style, and yeah. this certainly fits in. So, from a look standpoint, you can't, you can't necessarily evaluate something's mechanical competency by aesthetics. No, you know no. I mean? and we, we could show you some typewriters that are pretty darn good-looking machines that aren't the greatest to use, and we could show you some that are really ugly that smoke. Yeah. So. Yeah. But this is not all that bad, you know. Yeah. Top settable margins. Yeah, and they sold they sold lots of these typewriters uh, because they were inexpensive. Yeah, there's uh, a different price bracket. Yeah, I'll show you another one here. If you could slide that over, here's another machine that uh, you see lots of antique malls, but you almost never see on the net because nobody talks about them. We got a nice one here. This is a little Remingtons and hot from Holland. Uh, this the instructions on this are actually being contained. This is the way I got it. These instructions are in the wrapper from a pack of typing paper. Yeah. Yeah, if you flip yeah. it over, you'll see there's a price tag on there. It's from a drugstore. Bargain store. City Drugs. Yeah, Bargain City, yeah. 99 cents for a whole yeah. pack of so typing this, paper. This little Remington is in, this, is in that same low price bracket that the, uh, the uh, Cougar was in, uh, the Royal Darts, and uh, Al Royal Arrow. You know, all carriage shifted, all very small. Um, all made overseas, all imported yeah. here, and uh, you know, again, these are not great typewriters. Uh, this is probably the Smith Corona is probably a better typewriter, I would say, than the Remington. But you could do work with both, and both were used. This has some signs of use. This has pretty good signs of use. You see, much heavier uh, deposit on the type slugs in the center. You know, as, as you might expect. But uh, I want to show you something else here about why there's so many of these around. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe we can move this one here. Yeah. I'm not sure if everybody realizes this the the spread of these prices. So if I get out the Royal Line book again, let's let's remember this is from 1960 with updates in it through about 1963. So if I go in here and look at the Royal Light, which is a small flat Royal uh, from the 60s, I see that that is offered. That's the smallest typewriter they're listing in here. The next machine up is the Futura Portable. You've already seen that, right, with the Presto Magic top. You push the Royal Emblem and it opens. And then if we go up to, I'm flipping through the electrics here. Here's the FP, the standard with a carbon ribbon attachment. And then here's just the plain, uh, here's the Royal FP standard of the day. So you see the three typewriters they're offering, right? Well, if I go back here into the price schedules, 
this is not very exciting watching me turn pages here. Yeah. Yeah. If I go back here to the price schedule for the Royal Manuals, I see that the FP, the basic version with 11-inch carriage, was $225, okay? That's the standard, right? Yeah, that's the standard manual typewriter, <clears throat> okay? And just flipping through here as I go on a little further. If I go to the portable typewriters right there, Royal Portable Typewriters, Futura, 135 excise taxes on the right, Royalite, 49.95. That's a huge difference in price. That is an enormous difference in price. That is why they sold so many typewriters. Yep. Remember now, I said you get what you pay for most of the time, just yeah. like the tools. People yep. buying the cheaper ones, weren't. they knew they weren't buying a full size, full standard, full capable, full all function machine. Right, uh, but that's what they needed to write papers or what have you. And it, and it worked. Yeah, and again, some there are some dealers I talked to that uh, decided that they didn't like the quality of the Little Royals in the 60s and got out, went to Olympia, and other ones stayed with it. But uh, the point is, most of these machines, when they were new and low mileage, were really serviceable. You could produce papers with them. Sure, yep. You they know, did the job. Yep. Yeah, you did the job. Now, one last thing I want to bring up. This came up at the meeting. Where's that set of instructions from the uh, Remington that we just had over there on top of the... Yeah, this came up during the uh, during the meeting. If I flip open the instructions for the Remington here and uh, I go to care of your Remington portal, this isn't really care, but look at number one there. Use a snap stroke. This is the best way to tap the keys under portable. Type bar should bounce should quickly bounce off the paper, right? So that means that I want to at the machine. I don't want to follow the key all the way down and hold it, right? Following the key all the way down and holding it is called bottom typing okay that's the actual technical term for it if i go over right, where here the, where the key reaches the lower limit of its travel with your finger still on it there yeah now if i go to this uh, manual here which i can't remember who i got this from mike brown it's for the hall to seven uh, let's see here if i can actually find the page where they tell you this manual is the first one i've ever seen where they actually talk about, let's see, if we see here, uh, touch varies from light for speed writing all the way down to a delayed action direction of the key right down to the bottom for slow speed called bottom writing. Uh, they tell you, go on to tell you that the, the use of one touch on a typewriter adjusted for the other touch will lead to problems, you know, double impression or shadowing and bunching. So the hull to seven then is, is designed to be adjusted for either kind of physical technique. So we have a typewriter in the basement called the Predom. And if you say, I've never seen those before, you see it every time you look at our blog because it's yeah. the left-hand typewriter on the workbench. Yeah, you've seen it. Yeah, it's a descendant of the hull, the distant. We're going to look at that and see if it has the same adjustment for bottom typing so we can have a future video on typing technique showing you the difference between you know, the staccato touch that typing schools taught and that we're, we learned in typing class. Yeah. And uh, bottom typing that people who are, are younger and tend to have only had keyboarding classes in school would, would tend to use. Right, right. Yeah, so, because on a keyboard you push it all the way down. Yeah, but so that, that's, that's, that may be a big help to people that are having a lot of trouble finding typewriters, mechanical typewriters they like to use. Right, that suit your style. Yeah, if you, if you knew that, you might be able to change your technique and find a lot more machines you can use or use quickly. Or change so. your technique depending on the machine you're using. That's right. And, you know. Got the garage door open. That was a truck going by. Yeah. <laughs> it's our last yeah. warm day of the year here, at least Probably, we think it yeah. is. Yeah. So anyway, that's our that's our first weekly video. Uh, it was supposed to be short, but I see we're about 19 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's never. That's they're right. never short. They're never short. That's right. So we'll uh, leave it here and be paying attention through all the various venues, comments, um, emails forums for topics for next week's video yep and uh we'll see you in a week have a great week